Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee.
can't sing this song too much. Linda wanted to sing this today. But I love this song.
Thank you. May be seated. If you would take your Bibles this morning and turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. We're located at 3015 Upper Peachtree Road, Murphy, North Carolina, 28906. If you're in the local area, come be with us. We're at UpperPeachtreeBaptistChurch.com, the internet, SoundCloud, if you like to listen that way. That's something we kind of overlook sometimes. But that mechanism that's in that, if you've ever tuned into our website, that SoundCloud mechanism, there's a lot of people worldwide. I would say the majority of the folks that are listening to us in foreign countries are accessing us, not through the website, but through that SoundCloud, whatever that is. We call that, brother, a website, I guess. SoundCloud webs. They're going through SoundCloud, and I guess they're punching in Baptist churches or something, but that's how a lot of folks in some pretty faraway lands are listening to Upper Peach Street Baptist Church. So, SoundCloud YouTube. Uh, we've got people that are getting on there and following us on YouTube and everything, so praise God for all that. Hebrews chapter 11 this morning, and I promised I'm not going to reteach the Sunday school lesson. Our Sunday school lesson comes from the book of Hebrews. It must be a day for Hebrews because uh, Brother Jeff sent out text message to folks this morning. It was Hebrews and the Lord started dealing with it, me with this message yesterday morning before I read the Sunday school lesson, but uh, not the same thing, not the same thing. Same scripture though, some of it, but Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning we'll be looking at verses 8 through 16. Uh, beginning in verse number 8, Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible says, By faith Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whether he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He hath prepared for them a city. I'm going to stop reading right there, and I'd like to speak this morning, Lord willing, for just a few minutes on this subject, looking for a city. Looking for a city. We just sang that song a while ago, Looking for a City. We sang the song, City of Gold. Many of the songs in the hymnals, the song books, are filled with songs about heaven, how beautiful heaven must be. Uh, Tour in that city. And uh, praise God, I believe that. Amen. And uh, Abraham saw the city whose builder and maker was God. And by faith I'm seeking it too. How about you? Amen. Are you seeking that same city? Uh, Charlotte and I were talking on the way to church this morning. No wonder the Apostle Paul said, If all we had to hope for in Christ Jesus was in this life only, we'd be miserable. We'd be of men most miserable because we've got a hope in Jesus Christ. But if it all ended here, if all we've got to look forward to in this life is the murder and the mayhem, the lying, the cheating, the stealing, the thieving. Listen, all the hell that's going on in this world right now, the shedding of innocent blood, the drugs, the alcohol, the prostitution, all the nastiness that's in this world, if this is all there are to it, 
then God help us. But I'm glad, listen, Abraham was seeking a city whose builder and maker was God. Amen. We've got a tabernacle on the other side. We've got a heavenly body waiting for us. A house not made with hands, praise God, eternal in the heavens. We're talking this morning in Sunday school and that scripture came to my mind. If you're walking by sight and you're not walking by faith, you're looking at the temporal things of this world. 2 Corinthians chapter number 4 verse 18 said that, uh, listen, we're not looking at the things which are seen. We're looking at the things which are not seen because the things which are seen are so temporal. But the things which are not seen are eternal. Uh, we can't see heaven. We just hung a, a telescope a million miles, I think, from earth. They can see way out yonder, but it can't see heaven. Amen. You know what? If it could see heaven, we'd start walking by sight, not by faith. For by grace are you saved through faith. We've got to walk by faith and just believe, listen, praise God, that God's real. That He's gone to prepare a place for us. Amen. Jesus said He would. And here you look in this uh, scripture this morning, verse 8. It was by faith. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place, you know, he, Abraham was from the, the land of Ur. You say, well, where's Ur? You probably got a map in your Bible, and you ought to look at that thing once in a while. But there's a, Ur was located southeast of Babylon, over there in Sinai, uh, wilderness kind of area, down there along on the south bank of the Euphrates River. You'd have to pull north and west to go to Babylon. And God called Abraham out of the land of Ur. He had a daddy named Terah. He had a brother named Nahor. He had another brother named Haran. So why did God call Abraham? Why didn't he call Terah? Why didn't he call Nahor? Why didn't he call Haran? Why, why didn't he call somebody else in his family? Because Abraham had faith. You start getting into the, the, what God sees that man don't see. Uh, listen, Samuel said God looks on the inside. He don't look on the outside. God saw Abraham's heart that he had a heart that had faith in God. He had enough faith, listen, to get up out of Ur. And they'd sojourned to Haran. And they went on across and God told him, He says, you've got to get out of here and go to a land that I'm going to show you. He'd never been there before. Listen, we're sojourning in a place right here. God called you out of this world. You hear me? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing and I'll receive. God called you out of this world. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. And we're seeking a country. We're boldly saying that we seek a country or a homeland. In this scripture, when it said that we boldly say we seek a country, that word translates to our homeland. Paul said in the book of Philippians that uh, our conversation is in heaven. You know what that means? That means our citizenship is in heaven. Amen. We used to sing a song in the old red back hymnal the whole time I've been growing up. There's a song that says, I don't want to get adjusted to this world. Amen. Sometimes we get just a little too adjusted. Amen. This is temporary. Listen to what it said. Abraham got called out to go into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance. He stood to inherit it. Did he, was he going to inherit it from his daddy, his earthly daddy, Terah? No, Terah had never been there either. So who's he inheriting it from? He's inheriting it from God. Why? Because God promised him that land. How many of you know this morning that God owns the whole thing? He gives it to who He will. We talk about the promised land. Did you know that Israel right now is only at occupying a fraction of the promised land? They're not occupying what God promised. He promised, if you can go back in Genesis, you can read it. All the way from the Nile River, the river of Egypt up there. All the way from the Nile, all the way north and west to the Euphrates. And I mean east and all the way west to the Mediterranean Sea. That is the promised land. Some of you that are listening 
on the internet, maybe you live in an Arab, Arab country over there. Listen, I'm telling you, that's Bible. That's not my word. That's God's word. Amen. It'll be fulfilled. Uh, yeah. But, uh, and should receive the inheritance. And then look at the next word. He obeyed. Listen, he believed God, the Bible said, and it was counted to him for righteousness. He took God at his word. Abraham didn't have a degree in theology. From the university. He wasn't the Reverend Dr. Brother Abraham that's on channel 16 every night at midnight saying, Send me your money. Bless you all, but most of all, send your money. Abraham just trusted God. He trusted him enough to do what the Lord said, he trusted him enough to believe. If you're here this morning, you're saved. You're saved because you trusted in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God loved you so much that He sent His only begotten Son in simple childlike faith. And you said, yes, Lord, I believe that. And you trusted in that. And now, listen, you're born again. And now this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Get so wrapped up, tied up, tangled up, and marred up, bless God, in some of this temporary stuff that's going on in this world. Stuff that's getting belts through that television and everything. Cut the thing off and grab a hold of the Bible and start seeing the real promises and where we're headed. And we're headed for a country. Listen, they obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. He didn't know where he was going. He just following Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Listen this morning. Uh, Jesus put it this way. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. How often? Daily. And follow me. Amen. Are you following Jesus or are you trying to lead the way? You trying to be the leader. You say, come on, Jesus, follow me. I know what. No, no. We're following him. How far? From here on into the city. Because we're looking for a city. That city's real. Amen. It's got foundations. Praise God. Listen to what he said. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles. He, he didn't even have a permanent dwelling. He never dug the footers, uh, Brother Ronnie. He never laid the foundation. He never, he never built on anything. He had a tabernacle. That he lived in. That's a tent. He'd fold it up. He'd pick it up. He'd go move over here. He'd move over there. I can tell you in my lifetime, I've lived in a lot of different places. When I was growing up in Brevard over there, we lived all over Brevard. We didn't stay in one place. We lived on Tinsley Road a while. We lived on Short Street a while. We went up and we lived on Dogwood Hill a while. We lived out in Knob Creek for a while. Lived on Elm Bend Road for a while. I've lived in Maine, I've lived in Texas, I've lived in Germany, I've lived in Hayesville, praise God, Winston-Salem, Asheville, all over the place. It's just like, listen, this thing here ain't permanent. This is all temporary. Fold up our tents, listen, praise God, one of these days, we're going to fold up this tent for the last time. Hazel Cornwell. Folded up her tent for the last time the other day. Amen. There'll come a time. Listen. They're calling and say, Lord. The Lord just calling and say, Larry, it's time to come home. Time to come home to the inheritance. And someday when this tent here is folded and this life here is over, listen, we're going to step off on the beautiful shore. Amen. Amen. And we'll be with Jesus. He said this. He said, by faith, he sojourned in the land of promises in a strange country. We're in a strange country right now. If you're a born again, saved by grace, child of God, and the way the world carries on and the way the world acts, that's foreign to us. Amen. 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 You say you're too heavenly minded to be of any earthly good. No, bless God, you're too worldly minded to be of any heavenly good. Our citizenship's on be from beyond here. We're ambassadors and emissaries of Jesus' heavenly kingdom. While we're here, we're representing heaven until it's time to go home. Right now, He wants us in the world, but we're not of the world. Just like He wanted Abraham in the world. But now listen, let's go on. For He looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker 
is God. You say, is there really such a city as that? Boy, they sure are. Hold your place right here and fast forward and go to Revelation chapter number 21. And, uh, and let me tell you about this city. John saw it. John got a glimpse of it. Revelation chapter number 21. Listen to what the Bible says. Beginning in verse number 10. He carried me away in the Spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was likened to a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And had a wall great and high and had twelve gates and at the gates twelve angels and the names written therein which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had, listen, twelve foundations. Abraham sought a city that had foundations whose builder and maker is God. Not man, not man. Bible says plainly over there in Corinthians that there's no other foundation that can be laid other than that one that is laid, which is who? The Lord Jesus Christ! Amen. Did you know that there are people so naive and vain in their own hearts that they believe that they can build their own foundations of righteousness between here and heaven? No, it'll crumble like a house of cards. It'll fall. Listen. John saw it. The wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve of the apostles of the Lamb. And it goes on that, to talk about how that those foundations were made of, of twelve precious stones. Can you imagine when we get there and we see walls of that city twelve hundred miles high? That's how high the walls are. It's 1,200 miles in every direction. You don't know how far 1,200 miles. Somewhere about from here to about where I used to be stationed up in northern Maine. That's about 1,200 miles. And it's that way. And it's that way. And it's that way. 1,200 miles. And people down here are clawing all over and stepping all over each other to get just some money to stick in that bank account and everything that's going to perish with the rest of this world. And we're going to a place that's got 1,200 miles this way and that way and that way of foundations made by God of precious stones. And the street is pure gold. Yeah. I, that city's real. No wonder we sing about it. No wonder we hope for it. No wonder, because listen, we long to be with Jesus. And can I tell you, Jesus longs to be with us. Amen. Because He said, I go to, John 14, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. So oftentimes, me and Brother Jason was talking about this here recently. So oftentimes, you know, we, we get selfish in, in our in our prayer life, we'll we'll sit at the bedside of a of a loved one, and we pray, "Oh God, don't take them now! Don't take them from us! Don't take them!" From... But sometimes we're praying contrary to the will of God because Jesus wants them there with Him. Amen. We'll get there eventually. But listen, He said, "Where I am, ye may be also." He's gone to prepare a place for us. You know how different is heaven is from hell? It's as different as light is from dark. It's as different as day is from night. It's as different as Jesus is from the devil. Amen. I'm glad I'm going that way. How about you this morning? Can you say boldly with confidence that heaven is your home? I want to pull off the road here for just a minute and ask you the most serious question that you're ever going to hear in your lifetime. And here it is. If you died right now, do you know for sure that you're going to heaven? Amen. I mean, do you know of a certainty that if you died right now, that you'd be with Jesus? Amen. Or are you saying, boy, I hope so, maybe so, I think so. I, I hope I'm on the right side of the fence with the Lord. I hope I'm going to make it. If you can't answer in the affirmative 100% to that question, I implore you by the mercies of God to make your way to this altar and give your heart to Jesus. 
and make it right. And don't wait till I get done preaching. You just come right on. Listen, praise God. You need to know of a certainty that you're seeking the same city. Oh, I'd hate to be I'd hate to be standing in the choir loft singing how beautiful heaven must be and kill over dead and drop off into hell. Now wouldn't that be awful? Wouldn't that be terrible? Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, hell's terrible. I, ain't, I didn't come to preach on hell this morning. I come to preach on looking for a city. I hope that you're looking for the same city Abraham was looking for. Listen, we've got to hurry. For he looked for a city who hath, which hath foundation, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah. And I'm not going to go read that part. I want to skip on down. Look at verse 13. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Have you embraced the promises that are in this Bible? Have you, have you confessed them? Are you persuaded of them? Uh, you think, listen, you say, well, how do we know? I, I, there's a dear lady that, that I speak with very often and she's in a nursing home and she always says this, we don't know. We don't know when we go out. We don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what it's going to be like when we die. We just don't know. We don't know. We don't know. I said, we know what the Bible says. We're persuaded of those precious promises. Listen, I'll tell you something uh, this morning. Abraham was persuaded of them and you say, well, how do we know? Where's Abraham right now? How do we know that Abraham made it? Well, I'm glad you asked. Hold your place right here and turn back with me to John chapter number 8. John chapter number 8. And listen to what Jesus said. John chapter 8. He was contending with a bunch of self-righteous, hypocrite Pharisees that thought they were better than everybody else. That's who he was talking to right here. And listen to what he said in verse number 56. Your father Abraham, now remember Abraham lived way back in Genesis on this earth. He says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. The proof in the pudding. Abraham's not suspended in some... Uh, limbo state floating around out there on a cloud somewhere. Abraham in heaven, in paradise, saw Jesus' day, saw the promise. Listen, it all came together for Abraham. Abraham received the promise from God out there on the plains of memory. And, and he received those promises. And listen, he, he didn't understand them all, but he believed it. Can I tell you, I don't understand this whole Bible, but I believe it Amen. by faith. Amen. And Abraham saw Jesus' day. I wonder, I bet Abraham was just clapping his hands and praising the Lord. Uh, listen, over there in Bethlehem that night when Jesus was born and the angel showed up to a bunch of shepherds out there pulling the graveyard shift and said, unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Who is Christ the Lord? Listen, I bet Abraham was saying, Praise God, there he is. It's him. He's born. He's come. Listen. I believe there was a shout that went through heaven when Jesus was born. I believe when Jesus got up out of the grave that first Easter morning, I believe there was a shout that went through heaven and people were praising God and giving glory. Why can't we praise the Lord? Abraham's not floating around out there in some, some suspended soul sleep. He saw Jesus' day and he rejoiced. He was glad when he saw it. I want to show you something else about Abraham. Before Easter, before Jesus got up out of the grave, when the saved folks went to paradise and there was a gulf fixed between them. Turn back to Luke chapter number 16. And listen to, listen to what it's, Jesus said about Abraham. The rich man died, he went to hell, he lifted up his eyes in hell. The poor man named Lazarus, he died and the angels carried him away to Abraham's bosom. You see this? And he, the Lazarus, God remembered his name. 
He said, there's a certain rich man. Because, listen, the name of the wicked shall rot. But there was a certain rich man that died, and he lifted up his eyes in hell, and he saw Lazarus afar off. And you know where he was? He was in Abraham's bosom. And listen to verse 23. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now listen to Abraham here. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Beside all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Abraham wasn't in some knocked out state, he had Lazarus there resting with his head on his bosom. And he's speaking across this great gulf in a very intelligent, fluid, lucid conversation with a lost man who was in hell. And he told him, and listen, Jesus is the one telling this. How did Jesus know? Because as the Sunday school lesson said, He's omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient, and He saw it when it happened. And He listened and He heard when Abraham spoke across that gulf to that rich man. And He comforted that poor beggar man named Lazarus there in his bosom. I'm telling you, Abraham sought a city, and by faith, we're seeking it too. You think, I want to tell you this just right here. Listen, these promises... Promises have, that are in the Bible have to do with our faith. It has to do with our hope. And it has to do with His grace. We have hope. Why? Because we have faith in His grace. His love towards us. The, did you know that the most precious things in this life are intangible? You can't see them. You can't touch them. You can't feel them. People say, no, that ain't right. Oh, listen, I can see that brand new Ford truck. I can see that Cadillac. I can see that money. I, think I can see what's in my bank account and all this. Those are the precious things. No, all that's going to burn up and fizzle out. Most precious things are love, peace of mind, the promises that we have in this Bible, a blessed hope that we're headed to heaven. Praise God that heaven's real, that folks really goes there, that I'm going there because everything else is dying off. It's fizzling out. Come on. This world's going to pass away. His word won't pass away. His promises will stand when the world's on fire. Heaven's real. Praise God. Listen at this right here. The, the, these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having received, uh, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Did they see it with sight? No, they saw it with faith. And were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Yet the Bible says stand ready to give a reason for the hope that you have to people. You know, listen, I, we say boldly, I'm seeking a country. Uh, oh, Squire Parsons. I got to meet Squire Parsons a couple of times when I was stationed in Asheville. He's a nice fella. He really is. But he wrote that song, Beulah Land. And uh, you, know, you know what Beulah means? It means married. We're going to the married land. We're going to be married to Jesus. Beulah Land. Isaiah talks about Beulah Land. But you know, we're headed that way. But he says in that song, I'm kind of homesick for a country to which I've never been before. Abraham got up out of the land of Ur. He went down to the promised land. He'd never been there before. He's just trusting the Lord. Lord, He's just following the Lord. One day the Lord came to him and he said, I want you to take your only son. I want you to take Isaac up there on Mount Moriah. I want you to offer him up. Abraham said, yes, Lord. Knowing, believing that Isaac would live again. Having that faith, he went up there. And the Lord spoke to him and said, no, don't do it. The angel of the Lord came to him and said, no, don't do it. I know now, he said, you're, you're, not, you're willing to sacrifice your son, your only son. 
And that's what God did for us and made a way so that these promises could be realized. Listen, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. Listen, Abraham could have said, well, you know what? I'm going back. I'm going back to Ur. Who's with me? Saddle up everything. Let's, let's, let's pack it up and move it out. No, he didn't do that. Abraham was out there. Listen, him and Lot separated. Lot went to Sodom. Abraham was out there in the plains of Mamre and God came to him. God spoke to him. God gave him and Sarah a promise that they were going to have a son. And they said that your seed is going to be like the stars of heaven. He said, look up at the stars and see if you can number them. Abraham didn't fully understand all that. He, he's just by faith. Yes, Lord. But he believed God. It was counted to him for righteousness. And, and can I just tell you, you say, well, well where does that leave me? By faith in Jesus, now you're the child of Abraham. Amen. The promises that were given to Abraham are given to you also.